everyone, my name is Leilani, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some pre-writing activities and tips for your child with special needs that's an emergent writer. Now, it's not just for kids with special needs. I'm gonna explain that in a second. But first, let me explain the purpose of this video. We are gonna share with you those pre-writing stages, each and every one of them. We're gonna share with you some ideas that you can do as you bring your kid through those stages. But towards the end, it's gonna get less informal and more personal because I am going to share with you what we are doing with my four-year-old daughter who has Down syndrome as we teach her how to write and bring her through these stages at her level. We are a family of four kids. We are homeschooling. I'm a former public and private school teacher. I am a homeschool evaluator for the state of Florida and my youngest daughter has Down syndrome. We are in this process right now. Like I said, this is not just for those children with special needs because there are stages and every single kid goes through all of those stages. It just so happens that kids with special needs will go through them a lot slower and they may not complete them. We kind of hang out at that first stage a little bit longer. So we need some more fresh ideas, some new things, some games that we can add to it. We get to be a pro, like seriously, we become a pro. And so what this video is going to be doing is giving you those ideas and helping you understand that, okay? So let me get started with some pre-writing, well, the pre-writing stages. So the first stage is the drawing stage, and that's when you're gonna start seeing your kid start to draw things, like circles and lines, etc. Of course, when you're going through the stage, you wanna encourage your kid to keep doing it, have them explain to you what these things are. You never know, it could be the next invention that's gonna get them the Nobel Peace Prize. But this is the first stage we're drawing and we're exploring and we're discovering that this thing does that thing. Next, we're gonna have the scribbling, right? And this is when they're gonna start mimicking the marks on a page. You ever seen that before? And this is when they start to begin to understand that this has meaning behind it. Words have meaning, marks have meaning. And so what you can do is just continue to encourage this, ask them, what does that say? Maybe write their name and have them trace their name. You can start up on that. The third stage is just full blown mock handwriting. So that's gonna be your, you might get like zigzags, right? I'm writing a book, mom. It's about how much you love me and how beautiful you are and how amazing you are. You ever get that? It doesn't last long, enjoy it. What's cool about this is you want to, first of all, you wanna encourage them to move in that left to right manner if, if, you, if your handwriting is left to right. If you're in another country, it might be the opposite direction. But whichever way that you write, you want to encourage them to write in that direction. Of course, you can always have them practice their name and also this is when you see in those pre-writing books, trace the zigzags. Right, it's encouraging this stage of pre-writing. Next, you're gonna move into the letter-like formations. Now this is when they actually start to write letters. Even though they may not look like letters, we're getting there, right? You might even have like a, ooh, that's a letter. And they're just straight through, like this. Of course, this is when you wanna start teaching them the real letters. You wanna have them start tracing the real letters as well as seeing where the spaces are between the words, which leads me to the next stage of pre-writing. This is your letter strings. So they're actually making the letters, right? But they're not sentences, and there's no spaces between the letters. So this is of course when you wanna encourage the spacing as well as teaching them some beginning spelling. Of, well, you wanna teach them spelling. Now if you can't read it, which does happen, always encourage them to read it back to you and tell you what it says. Don't try to struggle through it or constantly correct them. You wanna encourage them to, to do the work, read back to them, and of course afterwards you say, what a great job. Let me show you something cool, and then, then correct them. The next phase is the transitional writing phase. Now you're gonna start seeing spaces pop in. And the words still might not make sense, but they're mimicking their environment. Something like that. The next phase is when they're actually trying to form the words. And capitalization versus lowercase is not gonna really matter to them, but we're getting somewhere. It's called the simple words and phrases stage. So you may get, I like dog, 
Of course, have them read it back to you. Tell them how amazing it is. Maybe the next day when you're doing copy work, maybe add the correct way to write this out in their copy work, just slip it in there and it'll help, you know, gently correct them on the spelling and the proper capitalization, lowercase, you know, that kind of stuff. I say that because stuff like that, when moms see that their first move is to correct it and fix it right away. And sometimes you need to sit back and compliment them for getting to that point in their writing development. Cause it is, it's a big deal. You can't expect someone to learn how to fly a plane overnight. I wouldn't get in that plane. And the eighth and final stage is our conversational spelling and writing, right? And now you have your full sentences. My name's not Madison though. I don't know why I wrote that. So those are the first eight stages. Of course, you may see some slight variations to it, but really that is, those are your eight stages. I wanna go back and look at the first stage again. It's the drawing stage. Now, even before they start drawing or even picking up a pencil, you need to really work on those fine motor skills with everyone. Special needs specifically need to really strengthen those tiny muscles in their bones. And you have to do this pretty much every single day. Now, you also need to be working on that hand-eye coordination, and that could be anywhere from throwing and catching a ball, bowling, playing with bean bags, like throwing the bean bags into the holes, blowing as well as catching bubbles. Now, when they actually get to the point where they're picking up the pencil, you want to really put your, yourself in a position of really trying to encourage them. You don't wanna make it a task because it can become that, you want to make it a game. When they're doing it, you wanna call it writing. You wanna say what it is and you wanna give it meaning. So after they do it, you wanna immediately say to them, tell me about this or draw me a picture about this. Discuss it somehow. If your kid is nonverbal, maybe you can kind of help use sign language or just facial expressions, you know, all those things that you do in a normal conversation with them. Apply it to the writing that they just did or the drawing that they just did. If there really is a meaning to this drawing, you actually write it down in words next to the drawing so they can make a connection that what they did with their pencil or pen or crayon has meaning to it. Encourage those vertical and horizontal lines. If they can't do this, you can do hand over hand. We do hand over hand all the time and eventually we start getting it. And as you do hand over hand, you wanna say things like up and down or across and call it a line too. So get that movement going. Also encourage those circles, call it a circle, do it hand over hand, label it and request it. So ask them, make circles, make lines. Then when they put that pencil down, you can actually have them build letters. Building is one of the first things that you can do to help them understand concepts with letters. So there's a couple things and I'll leave them down in the description box below. Handwriting Without Tears has a program and they do some letter building. There's also something called GeoSticks for the more advanced student, I wanna say more advanced, more advanced preschooler that's still learning their letters. It's really actually fun for any age. It really, you don't have to just build letters. You can build lots of things with it. And there's lots of different sizes. They're just really cool. You can get some magnets. You can get some cool books or cards where you can actually trace the letter. If you don't want to do that, you can just get some sandpaper and cut out some letters or get some really nice glue and get artsy and then put the sand on top. There's lots of things that you can do. You can even get some sand and trace it on the sand or get one of those gel bags and trace letters on the gel bags. It's also really good to work on their visual motor integration. Now, visual motor integration is when you are linking what you see and what you make with your hands. So the link is connected there. Some of the things that are really good for that is block building, puzzles, patterns, pattern blocks, cutting with scissors, and even stickers. You also wanna work on their motor planning, and this is the ability to follow through with written or oral instructions. And the ways that you can work on this is by playing games such as Simon Says, Follow the Leader, Hokey Pokey, even giving two-step, three-step directions. You're also gonna work on their body awareness. That's gonna include your bilateral integration. That's when you know you cross your hand over to the other side right? It's that ability to use both sides of your body. And of course, things that will help that is stuff like catching a ball, clapping, string beads, playing an instrument, pouring from one cup to another. And also you need to work on their sensory integration. I know I'm giving you a lot guys, but that sensory integration is going to be how hard or how soft they need to push to get the right pressure. And the best thing to do with that is Play-Doh. 
right? You, you can go to the store, get a Play-Doh, you've got that thing that you push, you got this stamper, or even stamps, stamps work too. And music, make sure you're utilizing music and dancing with your hands and with your feet, especially that body, right? Crossing the midline. Now that they start to get the hang of those things, don't throw those out, keep working on them. But the first thing you wanna do is give them their pencil. Of course, hand it to them in the middle so they decide which hand they want. They may go both hands for a while, but eventually they'll start to pick one hand or the other unless they're ambidextrous, but just present it to them in the middle. Show them how to properly hold a pencil. Now, after a while, you may wanna consider using some of those pencil grabbers, but don't do that until you've tried everything else to get them to hold the pencil properly wait, delay that. Try to get them through practice to hold the pencil properly first. The first word you wanna teach them is their name. Like, let's be honest, teach them their name, that's the first word. What I like to do is take a yellow highlighter and then write out her name, and then I will do hand over hand and have her trace over it from top to bottom. We like to use handwriting without tears. We just started, I like it, I really like it. That's, that's because I've actually seen it work really well in the past. So many therapists, occupational therapists, even our occupational therapist mentioned to me that she uses the methods that are taught with handwriting without tears. We had another intervention specialist constantly tell me how amazing that program is and worked with her kiddos. So it is, you know, across the board, one of the best programs you can use with really any child, but specifically with kids that have uh, disabilities, learning delays, and special needs. Of course, you wanna always model in front of them, writing it out yourself, reading it as you write it out so they're recognizing words have meanings. And of course, if you're reading a book to them, you wanna to point to each and every word and read it out loud. So once again, same thing, words have meanings. And eventually you're gonna see your child pick up a book and go da, ba da, or read it or make up words based on the pictures that they see. And of course, encourage them, take each and every scribble very, very seriously. It's really hard to sometimes, but we gotta check ourselves and remind ourselves to do that. You can do this by, whoa, look at this everybody, it's an amazing picture, and show off to the whole entire family, sticking it up on the fridge, maybe mailing it to a friend or a grandparent, or somebody and making sure that they make a big deal about it too. Also try to provide writing materials for pretend play. So if they're playing, you know, school, you can give them some paper, that's an easy one. Or if you're doing grocery shopping, right? Or cooking, you can have a grocery list. You can have tags that you put on the produce. You can have money, have them draw out money. If they're doing, you know, their train set, you can make little index card signs like stop and go and street names and such. Give them the opportunity to create written materials for their pretend play. I do quickly want to share with you a resource that I'm using. It's this fine motor fun book. I will try to stick a link in the description box below if I can find it. If not, I'm going to show you a little bit, some ideas that you can actually probably find off of teachers, paid teachers. So a lot of it is like, you know, using your wrist, Play-Doh, homemade Play-Doh recipe ideas. But then as you get to the back, you know, you've got the finger puppets that you can cut out and do with them and fun little like songs and poetry that you can do. Cows, puppets, squirrels, clothing. Here's a little washboard and it's a song. So lots of finger play for those fine motor skills and body awareness. Squeezing and tweezing activities, which I forgot to mention, but the squeeze, it's also part of the sensory processing. Paper plates, yeah, let your kid actually squeeze the glue out guys, the Elmer's glue, let them do that. Okay, some more, these are the threading cards. You can laminate these. Clothes pins are great. This is a, a clothes pin on a wheel, you match the numbers. This is clothes pin on a jar, you put the stickers down here, right, and each clothes pin has a picture and you match. They actually have a couple different ones so you can pick and choose which one you want. Then we have some scissor skills that they have. You don't necessarily have to have these specific cutouts. I can sometimes, I use construction paper, let's be honest. We just fringe it, fringe the edges of the construction paper. Have some more cutting, cut to the car, get, give this guy a haircut, cutting on zigzags, snail. And then of course it gets harder and they actually have to cut out animals along the thick black line, color them too. It goes through some more, you know, teacher instructions. There's some stencil patterns. Now we're gonna do some tracing cards. And these of course increase in difficulty to where eventually you're doing dot to dot. Now you're drawing the other side of faces. Now you get to your letters. 
So they literally are walking you through some of the stages of pre-writing for emergent writers. This is a great book. I'm gonna try to leave a link down below. Now all of this, we are doing, we're trying really hard to do this, and she is very resistant to writing, yet when she does a masterpiece, she wants to show the entire household is kind of a big deal with Naomi. But with, like I said, we're still in that scribbling, drawing phase where she's doing the lines and the circles. And we use a couple of things for her to kind of help her as tools. Really, we use a pencil, I'll just be honest. We use a pencil. And it's a golf pencil because little hands need little pencils. We also use some crayons, those big chunky crayons, as well as some dots. You have those, I mentioned some of those hands-on materials to build the letters. So these are all the things that we do to just kind of pretend play. And we're using the program Handwriting Without Tears, which I mentioned before. I will keep you guys posted. I'll probably do like a lot of videos sharing, you know, what the next stage look like, where our struggles are. So make sure you are subscribed to this channel. If this was informative to you, give me a thumbs up. If you have any ideas to add to this, you know, share in the comments down below. I'm learning too. Thank you guys for watching. And until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye.